Howdy. So today we're going to talk about regression, purposes of regression. To start off with, we're just going to talk philosophically about this. And so to do that, let's go back to our bestiary of analyses. We kind of started off the entire semester with this, where we have independent and dependent variables, and we have um, uh, nominal and continuous varieties of each one. Nominal, continuous, and we have every possible combination. So we spent much of the semester to this point talking about nominal independent variables and continuous y variables and that led us to analysis of variance, right? So we spent a lot of time at that because there are a lot of varieties of ANOVA and we are learning general principles of experimental design and so forth and and they often fall into those factorial type experiments in biology. So now we're going to move however into uh, situations where we have continuous x variables and continuous y variables and um, that falls into the realm of regression. Just to give a little, give a little hint, there's actually going to be a, an area in between here that um, combines those two approaches where we have maybe some nominal and some continuous variables. And um, continuous. Um, so there will be an in-between, which I'll get to. But right now I just want to focus on pure designs where we have a continuous x, maybe even more than one continuous x, and a continuous y variable, which we call regression. Okay, so this is different from ANOVA in that we have a continuous independent variable, um, but we are looking at cause and effect. We are looking at y as a function of x, unlike with correlation, right? Okay, so when would we use regression? So a first kind of... Um, use of regression would be where we want to establish a functional relationship between some independent variable between x and a dependent variable y. Okay, so by the way, when we do this, we say we regress y on x. Um, you might say, why don't we regress x on y? Because y is our dependent variable, and we're asking, does it depend on x? Okay, so uh, when we do this kind of regression, a, um, whoops, a, a cause and effect relationship is implied. We're not just looking at the association between two variables. We're assuming that uh, x causes variation in y. And um, we have to recognize that stats packages don't know this. They don't know automatically. <laughs> um, so you have to tell a package like SAS jump which is the x variable and which is the y variable, because it can treat any of them like X or Y, but you have to cast them into roles appropriately. And uh, in SAS jump, we'll be using fit Y by X to do that. Okay, but remember, SAS and statistics packages generally are just high-speed computational idiots. They're doing your bidding. So you have to tell it which is the independent and dependent variable. When do you choose regression rather than correlation? You choose regression when you have a plausible biological mechanism. So, when you have a plausible, defensible, in other words, biological mechanism by which x causes variation in y and not vice versa, right? Because it's not talking about association or codependency anymore. 
we're talking about directional effects of x on y, and you have a possible explanation for that. So for example, if we're talking about chlorophyll content and how that might influence photosynthetic rate, um, I suppose one could find and postulate mechanisms by which photosynthetic rate would influence chlorophyll, but generally that's a cause and effect relationship that's in this direction. And if we look at chlorophyll variation from leaf to leaf, for example, that would be influencing photosynthetic rate. And we would postulate that that's a one-way directional relationship, not the other way around. I suppose you could come up with stories about why those might be correlated. And maybe if you didn't understand the underlying physiology, you could just look, use correlation first to see if there's an association, and then you might go looking for a biological mechanism. But we know what that biological mechanism would be. It's photosynthesis, right? So, okay. So the other use for regression sometimes is to develop, I'm running on reserve power, is to develop, so another use of regression is to develop a calibration equation relating some x variable to some y variable that we want to infer. Um, so this is often used in calibration or it's often used also in getting an allometric relationship. So if we want to measure one thing but using an allometric relationship because of a known relationship, we, we want an equation relating one to the other so that we can infer one from the other. Then um, we might do regression, okay? So overall, I want you to sort of think about regression the same way you've been thinking about analysis of variance, where we have y as a function of x with some error, okay? So we have error, unexplained variation in y, and we have explained variation, but now beta is the slope of the relationship between x and y, and then we have some y-intercept. And we don't particularly usually care about the y-intercept. We usually care about, care about the slope, and we care about is that slope significantly different from zero? So our null hypothesis is that beta, our parametric slope, equals zero. So the parametric slope of the relationship equals zero. And this is for simple linear regression. But we will introduce the idea of other kinds of regression as well that aren't necessarily linear and may have other coefficients. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Let's just look at straightforward linear regression. Notice how this decomposition of the effect on y is very similar to our model for um, ANOVA, which was, remember, y equals mu plus some effect of being a member of group I plus some uh, additional error variation, right? And we have that same kind of thing here, except that now we're looking at the slope of a continuous variable determining y. All right, so philosophically, regression is used to say cause and effect relationships. You're trying to fit a function to it, and it is going to be our null hypothesis that that slope of that function is zero if we're doing simple linear regression. Okay, um, I think that's all we need to do. Oh, by the way, uh, actually I want to talk about one more thing. Um, when we report on regression, when we report on regression, we report uh, the, the equation, including the slope, okay, the slope is what we're really interested in. We report r squared, not r. Okay, so that's a mistake that's often made. We report the equation, including the slope. We report r squared, not r. And I'm going to have a separate video on exactly what r squared is giving you. 
So look for that coming up. Because um, actually you're going to find that R squared is an interesting concept and it needs to be really understood before you go reporting it. Um, but we are really interested in this slope and we're using regression to test whether that slope beta equals zero or whether we can reject that null hypothesis and say that it is not equal to zero. All right, so that's why we're using uh, regression. That's why we're doing regression. Okay, I'll leave it down. I'll leave it down.